So one of the main questions about invasive species is just how they affect uh, ecosystems and how do they affect biodiversity and why are they such a huge problem for biodiversity loss? Well, I'm going to talk about that today. Here we have this really happy-go-lucky ecosystem here. It's the wooded area here with a little meadow and a pond, and it's just in balance. It's a balanced ecosystem. All these are native uh, species here. You have your pollinators pollinating the flowers, and they're going to be dropping seeds, and that's going to feed you know birds, and everything's in balance as uh, they've evolved together. They've adapted together for you know thousands of years. And it's just in balance. We have the tertiary consumers here keeping uh, prey items in balance, but then we have we, our secondary consumers around keeping the you know the primary consumers in balance, and then those are helping the the pollination of seeds and everything. Everything's just happy, and it has its purpose. It has its niche in the ecosystem. So as we go along, sometimes every now and then a invasive species or a new species gets introduced and, and this new introduced species this is scotch broom here it got brought over to the united states as an ornamental plant and sooner or later you know some seeds got out into the wild either uh, birds ate it and then uh, in the poop out in an ecosystem like ours here uh, one plant's not going to be a, a real issue uh, even the pollinators are going to, you know, like the new, you know, the yellow flowers that it produces. So they're going to, you know, go after them and then they're going to pollinate it. And then once it pollinates, what's going to happen then is then it's going to drop seeds. And then that's going to spread out a little bit. And even now, just a few plants is not going to put the balance out of whack. Introduced species get, inter or new species get introduced all the time. In fact, over 50,000 uh, introduced and non-native species live here in the United, or in the North America, and only about five to 6,000 of them are uh, considered to be invasive. And we're going to see just what makes them invasive here in a second. So as time goes by, pollination keeps happening and they're going to keep spreading. And they're, as they spread, they're going to start kind of pushing out these native plants. And with native plants, you know, we have uh, this is a, the example I gave is this swallowtail caterpillar here, or um, it doesn't even have to be that. It has to be, or it can be any species of insect or bird or um, anything that kind of depends on those native plants because, again, they've evolved together for thousands of years. So that they're going to need each other. And once these uh, new invasive plants start to come in here and take over, they're going to push out and outcompete those uh, native species because invasive species have the tendency to outcompete because they don't re they don't require all the the water a native plant does, or their taproot goes further down than the native plant faster, or it grows faster and just keeps it from uh, getting sunlight and just outgrows it. Uh, the issue with that is, is the native insects that depended on these native plants here, these sunflowers, well, they can't eat these. And in, in fact, some uh, invasive plants, like scotch broom here, is toxic to herbivores. So nothing's really going to munch on it. So that just also get, puts it out of balance because nothing's keeping it in balance. Uh, but the species where it's from, there are things that can eat it and it keeps it in balance. And as it kind of keeps pushing, you're going to lose some of those insects that depended on those native plants. And with the with that, we're going to lose other species as well that maybe depended on the seeds, uh, such as that bird. But now time is really going to come uh, come along because all of these plants here are now producing their, all their seeds. And maybe these birds are going to eat the seeds and then keep spreading them. Or the wind uh, keeps spreading them. So every, every year, every growing season, this is just going to keep spreading. And sooner or later, it's going to take out another uh, native plant. And those native plants, you know, kept were food sources for insects, which are food sources for birds. And with li fewer and fewer insect species that can survive in this ecosystem, we're going to see more and more secondary and uh, consumers, such as those birds, kind of disappear without those insects that they depended on to feed their young. 
So those birds are going to start disappearing and they're going to start moving away into different ecosystems. So as we keep going along, uh, more and more of the invasive species kind of takes over and you can see where this is going. And since the, uh, the secondary consumers, then without the, all those secondary consumers, those birds and those young, uh, those rabbits, since this is uh, toxic, they're not going to want to be able to eat it. And that's going to push out the tertiary consumers. And then this is going to pretty soon you're going to have a monoculture. And this would be a monoculture. What a monoculture means is just one plant species in an area. And with only one plant species, you can only support very few other native species. So that's how plants affect it. But what about animals? We always hear about invasive animals. How do invasive animals affect an ecosystem. So if you're a fisherman like me, you would love to know where this uh, spot is to go fishing. Uh, but this is a, a, an aquatic ecosystem. Again, you have these um, the primary consumers, the little fish, and then you have all, all the way up to the tertiary consumers, the big bass up there. But say one day something like a silver carp gets introduced. Well, again, one fish is not going to be a problem. But with invasive uh, uh, species, plants, animals, all it takes is one pregnant female or a mating pair. And once that happens, then they they give birth. And with uh, invasive species, they give birth to a lot. Um, say a, a big silver carp can uh, lay up to a million eggs. And if, it, if they get fertilized, well, that's a million chances of them becoming another big female. At this point, they're still the same size. They they're small. They they're small. They're uh, they're the size of the prey items. So these tertiary consumers up here are going to be able to prey on them, and kind of keep them in check. But the few that do survive, they're the ones that are going to grow. And with uh, a lot of invasive species, they grow at a very fast rate. They have very fast growth rates. So they quickly outgrow where the predators can keep them in check. So right now, um, the only predator that can really keep these in check are that big bass there. This crappie is not going to be able to, um, maybe a flathead catfish, you know your snapping turtle is definitely going to be able to keep them in check, but there's not enough of them to keep them in check. So once those grow past the predator, predator's uh, ability to munch on them, then they're going to be the ones that give uh, give birth and have offspring. And then again, few are going to uh, die out, few are going to be preyed upon by predators, but they're going to quickly grow to where they can't be um, preyed upon, and they're just going to start pushing out other species. Uh, this species in particular are a, uh, usually eat uh, plankton, zooplankton, phytoplankton, what a lot of uh, native species of fish feed on while they're in the larval stage. While they're baby fish, they eat the same things as these guys, the silver carp. But the silver carp eat the same things as the baby fish all their lives. So this big fish is going to eat a lot more plankton than, say, baby bass or baby sunfish, baby catfish, uh, red shiners, bullhead shiners, or bullhead minnows. Uh, they're going to eat a lot more of the, the food stock, and that's quickly going to outcompete these smaller fish and the baby fish. And what that's going to do is that they're just going to keep populating, and they're going to start pushing out these bigger species. Uh, they're either going to leave to a different area, they're going to bully them out of this area, or they're just going to outcompete the population to an unsustainable level. And pretty soon, we've seen it in some of our rivers, especially the Iowa River, or the Illinois River, sorry, the Illinois River, where up to 90% of the biomass of these river systems are silver carp because they are just repopulating or reproducing at an, un an unimaginable rate. They're pushing all the native species out to different areas or they're just out competing them where their populations are going down so far. And pretty soon you have this area where Fishermen aren't going to want, want to um, come fish because they're not going to be able to catch anything other than maybe snagging uh, a big silver carp. Um, they have caught them on line and lure before using grubs. I've seen it happen. But in some states where they are invasive, well, they, these are invasive throughout the entire United States, but in, in most states, it is illegal to release them. 
most people would want to go after the, you know, go back to before that trophy bass there, the trophy catfish, but now their fishing hole is nothing but silver carp. And that's how invasive species kind of, kind of affect biodiversity. They either outcompete them to where they move and change their habits, or they outcompete them to where their populations are just, you know, dwindling. And that can also affect economies as well. Where the fishermen don't go, the money doesn't follow, and these smaller fishing towns are kind of, are losing a lot of money. In fact, these invasive fish not only push out native fish and trophy fish and game fish and native species, but they're also pushing out businesses and people out of their homes. So that is how invasive species really kind of affect everybody, the ecosystem, the economy, you know, go back to the terrestrial uh, habitat where we used to have a very biodiverse, um, biodiverse area here. Many different species of uh, native species and a very balanced uh, ecosystem. But that's how they affect everything. I hope this has helped. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe to uh, Invasive Brews and I'll keep doing videos like this, kind of explaining invasive species, as well as be getting first-hand accounts on several different invasive species. Until next time, I hope you plant native and I hope you drink local.